This series of slides describes some stoichiometry problems that involve reactions in which one of the reactants is in limited or short supply. This situation arises often in the laboratory. Let's say that we want to make cisplatin, a platinum-containing compound that is used to treat certain cancers. To make cisplatin, we mix a platinum chloride with ammonia. The platinum chloride is quite expensive, so if we're going to use it in a reaction, we want to make sure we use all of it. Therefore, we mix a small amount of the expensive platinum compound with a large amount of inexpensive ammonia. The platinum salt is the limiting reactant. But how would you know this? And how would you calculate the yield of the product? That's the subject of the following series of slides. The reaction of methanol and oxygen is a good example of a reaction that involves a limiting reactant. Watch the video, and then you decide which is the limiting reactant. Is it methanol, CH3OH, or is it oxygen? As methanol burns, it reacts with oxygen in the atmosphere to form carbon dioxide and water. Notice that the reaction occurs only where the methanol and oxygen can contact each other, and that the reaction is rather mild. If we allow oxygen greater access to the methanol, the reaction becomes more vigorous. What did you decide about the limiting reactant? It was pretty clearly the methanol in the beaker. After all, the amount of methanol in that beaker was perhaps 50 to 100 milliliters, whereas the oxygen in the reaction comes from the atmosphere surrounding the uh, beaker, and that's present in an enormous amount. So the reaction products, the CO2 and the water, are controlled in their amount by the amount of methanol in the beaker, and not by the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. Methanol is, is the limiting reactant. This is a pictorial example of a limiting reactant situation. Here we have the reaction of CO and oxygen to give CO2. The balanced equation shows us that two molecules of CO require one molecule of oxygen to give two molecules of CO2. Now look at the box on the left, the reactants. There are one, two, three, four molecules of CO and three molecules of oxygen. Now look at the box on the right. How many CO2 molecules were formed in the reaction? There are four. One molecule of oxygen remains. Which is the limiting reactant in this process? Clearly, the answer is that it is the CO. Two molecules of CO require one of oxygen. So the four molecules of CO that we began with require two molecules of oxygen. We had three to begin with, and so one remains. So the outcome of the process is controlled by the limiting reactant, that is, CO in this case. The reaction or reactant in abundant supply is the oxygen. We had three molecules to begin with. We required only two. One is left over. Here we're going to look at the reaction of metallic zinc and hydrochloric acid. The reaction will produce zinc chloride that dissolves in the water and hydrogen gas. We'll observe the hydrogen gas coming out of the reaction because we're going to attach a balloon to the flask and the hydrogen gas will expand the balloon. There are several things that you should notice. First, we're going to vary the amount of zinc metal, but we're going to keep the amount of hydrochloric acid constant in the three reactions. Second, at the end of the reaction, is there any zinc remaining? Third, at the end of the reaction, do the balloons that were expanded by the hydrogen gas, are those balloons of the same volume? Are they larger or smaller from reaction to reaction? For this demonstration, we put three different amounts of zinc into the same amount of hydrochloric acid. At the end of the reaction, there is still some zinc remaining in the flask on the left. The reaction on the right did not generate as much gas because there was an insufficient amount of zinc. In the center reaction, the balloon inflated fully and all the zinc was consumed. The reaction in the center flask was set up so that zinc and hydrochloric acid were present in the correct mole ratio. That is, in this flask we had two moles of hydrochloric acid for every one mole of zinc. The amount of hydrogen produced then was one mole of hydrogen for every two moles of HCl, one mole of hydrogen for every one mole of zinc. 
In the experiment in the left-hand flask, we can make two observations. First, there's some zinc remaining at the end of the process. This indicates that the zinc was there in abundant or an excess supply. This implies that hydrochloric acid is the limiting reactant. The second observation we can make is that the size of the balloon is exactly the same in the left-hand flask as in the middle flask, implying that the amount of hydrochloric acid in each of those reactions is what determined the amount of hydrogen produced in the process. This again confirms that hydrochloric acid is the limiting reactant in the left-hand flask. In the flask on the right, the zinc was completely consumed and relatively little hydrogen gas was produced. Zinc is the limiting reactant in this case. Now we want to become more quantitative about our reactions involving limiting reactants. Let's look at the reaction of aluminum and liquid bromine to give aluminum bromide, Al2Br6. Let us say that we have 3 moles of aluminum and 3 moles of Br2, which is the limiting reactant. There are two ways to look at this. One, if we have 3 moles of aluminum, we know that 3 moles of Br2 are required for every 2 of aluminum. That means that 4.5 moles of Br2 are required. Another way to look at it is that there are 3 moles of bromine, 2 moles of aluminum are required for every 3 of bromine, and so 2 moles of aluminum are required. The first way shows that 4.5 moles of bromine are required, but we have only 3, so bromine must be the limiting reactant. The second way to look at it, 2 moles of aluminum are required by 3 of bromine, but we have 3 moles of aluminum, so aluminum is present in an excess amount, which means that bromine is the limiting reactant. Either way we look at it, Bromine is the limiting reactant in this situation. Let's look again at the reaction of aluminum and bromine. Here, we have 3 moles of aluminum and 6 moles of bromine. Let's do a stoichiometry calculation. 3 moles of aluminum require 3 moles of bromine for every 2 of aluminum. That's our stoichiometric factor. And tells us that 4.5 moles of Br2 are required. Well, we have 6 available, so that means that bromine is present in excess amount in this case, so the limiting reactant must be aluminum. 